All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you so much for attending our class with the one and only Steve Gundell. He is here to teach us how we're going to run our business from our phone. Um, about ninety percent of our business can be done on the phone, believe it or not. So uh, I'm going to leave it to Steve to take it away and grace us with his knowledge. Okay. Sure. See me, hear there me. There you go. Everybody see me and hear me? Yep. Perfect. Cool. Good. Um, so Amanda is going to man monitor the chat in case anyone has questions, which makes life my life easier. So for those of you who are at the shift into overthrive event, this might be some repetitive. I don't know if you were there. Um, but I was fine. okay, great. So this is all new. Um, but let's just talk a little bit about how do you get more money more time? The most important thing is leverage. And I don't think people realize that as a realtor, you don't have leverage unless you choose to have leverage. Um, for example, me, I run a real estate team. I've been in the business 20 years. We do about 25, 30 million. I'm OP at the Market Center, Keller Williams Sugar Island Realty in Livingston. Um, I'm also a regional technology director, and I also have multiple investments. So needless to say, keep myself busy. Um, with all those things going on, and with from my time constraints, you know, people say, how do you manage to do it all? And that's leverage, and I use a lot of technology to leverage myself, whereas technology can bog, bog down those people, and if you don't spend the time understanding the technology, you're gonna end up just wasting your time. So you can make money and get your time back if you understand how the technology is gonna help you. But you also have to decide that you're gonna practice using the, the technology. Back. All right, we're back, guys. Sorry about that. We are here. So there's two paths to leverage tools and people. Either you're going to use a tool from your toolkit, which I believe is a piece of technology, or you're going to end up using people. The most powerful tool ever invented to help you is technology. The problem is, is that it always changes. It always gets updated and it always gets more confusing. It's supposed to be simple, right? Yes. But it's not always so simple. So we can change that, but technology can be intimidating. Like, let's be really honest, right? It's every time they update the iPhone, everyone freaks out. Every time they come out with something better, everyone, artificial intelligence right now is the buzzword, everyone freaks out. Um, my background was an artificial intelligence software, by the way, 20 years ago, I actually sold artificial intelligence software. We didn't even know what that was. So we didn't actually call it artificial intelligence because no one understood what we were talking about. Internally, we didn't. Externally, we didn't. So, Technology is great. However, it all revolves around the work of efficiency. However, the intimidation factor is so big that we're actually not efficient with our technology. If that makes sense. So let's just talk about digital payments. Think about it, right? Years ago, we had barter. Yeah. Someone invented coins. And then someone got you know, bills. And then we had to checks. And then we went to credit card. And now we're even now we're down to cash. So we've gone the full cycle, right? We've gone from bartering and no no cash to now mobile payments and no cash, right? All through the evolution of technology, because we're now able to send money online. No different with your database and real estate, right? I had an address book. Eventually, I had a Rolodex. Then I ended up using a business card book to hold all my business cards. Then I went to computer, mobile phone, CRM, mobile CRM, right? Eventually, it's going to be implanted in our brain or something, right? So, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? So, like, think about it. How many of you guys listening on Zoom actually read the manual of your car? Do you read your manual? How to drive your car? Manual. Nope. Read your manual. 
I read a little bit. <laughs> Um, my wife and I bought a Tesla about a year and a half ago. Probably the greatest car buying experience with technology ever. One, you go online, you don't go into dealership. There's not even a dealership to test drive the car. So we test drove a friend's test. One drive, she said, I'm buying it. Order everything online. They send you text message updates when your car is ready. You go and pick up your car. When you pick up your car, they when you walk into the dealership, you sign one sheet of paper. They say, have fun, good luck. Your car's outside. You go to your car, you just drive off. No tutorial, no demo, no explanation of this new car. And it's a different car. Like learning how to drive a Tesla is a different experience. But they assume you're just going to figure it out. But I'm not going to use every feature in the car, right? Like. People change the color of their car and they change different driving modes and they can make the car sing. And there's all these different, I don't know if you realize inside the Tesla, there's um, um, you can program the seats so that each seat can be different heats depending on your kids, right? Actually, you can set it up to actually have a fart machine. So if your kids sat down in the back, it was a machine, like it's hysterical, right? Yeah. But I'm not going to use all those features, but it's there for those people who want to do it. In fact, my wife just realized you can change the color, the, the outside color is red, but inside you, on the app, you can change the color of your car, you can name your car. Like all these different things you can do. Are we ever going to do those things? No, but they're there for someone who does. If you have teenage kids, they would. If you have teenage kids, they would, because they went on YouTube to watch a video and edit it, right? And that's the biggest challenge is that when we're looking at technology, we're looking at technology, even with this, like how many of you guys read the manual how to do this, how to use your phone? But, right, but that's the point is everyone's like, I need a training class and I'm going to do it. And my recommendation is if you spend 10 minutes a day in your tech, you'll learn something new. That's where the chicken and the egg concept is, right? So think about even just using Zillow. None of your buyers needed to instruction manual on how to use Zillow. They just went online and searched, right? Same thing. So this is a simple concept with our technology, which is when you have a buyer or seller, and this is what we recommend. Number one, create them as a contact and command. You can do it from your phone. I'll show you guys how to do that. Number two, if they're an immediate piece of business, they're looking to buy or sell or invest, create an opportunity. Why do we say that? Because your opportunity is your sales pipeline, and that's where you can trap all your deals. That way you don't keep them in your head. Okay? And then if they're future business, put them on a smart plan. It's that simple. All right? We like to overcomplicate it. But this is like the number one most important thing. Create a contact. If they're now business, future business, create an opportunity. If they're eventual business, past client, et cetera, put a on smart plan. Does that make sense? If you can master that simple concept, everything else gets a lot easier. I can't say how many people I talk to, they're like, oh, I don't use opportunities unless I have a deal closing. You know different. And this is not a, I'm not trying to put anyone down. The only one I'll put that is my mother who been in real estate with me for 40 years. Okay, that's it. Is if you have no way to track it, how do you know what you're doing? How do you know what your pipeline looks like? How do you know what your deals are? And then how do you type a dollar amount to those deals? Right? And eventually, the bigger you want to use opportunities, the easier it becomes. Okay, makes sense? Otherwise, I can't remember it all. I'm talking to too many people. So if you guys go to the 3201 plus concept, all right, this this will maybe blow your mind or not, depending on how long you've been a realtor. But the secret to having the money you want in real estate is three things and 201 plus, okay? The three things are, we know that the number one way people make money, in fact, almost 40% of realtors make their money on their sphere of influence. That's it, which means your database. Your database is your goal. That's why companies try to capture your information because the bigger their database is, the more money they make. Make sense? Yeah. Right? I don't care whether it's Disney, Tesla, Amazon, Google, Google <laughs> Facebook, um, uh, Macy's, um, pick, pick a company you buy this from. Right? The more data they have on you, the better, so they can micro market to you. When I say micro marketing, what does that mean? Get those ads pop up. Right. That's one way of micro marketing. Give me another way of micro marketing. That's a great answer, by the way. I've never heard that before. Right, that's 100% correct. Like you have something here that's what I'm right. The other thing you do is like customize emails. For example, 
we're so used as realtors to doing what I call mass marketing. I'm going to tell everyone I got my new listing. And then they've got to ask yourself, no one asks themselves this question. Does anyone really care? How many times do people believe it? Micro marketing is the word because how many of you guys have a cell phone, a mobile phone? Yes? Do we all have the same apps? No. No. You know why? I get to pick what I want, which means I can filter you in and out of my world. So the realtors have to understand this concept of micro marketing on a mass scale versus mass marketing. Mass marketing is I'm going to tell everyone I got a listing. I'm going to tell everyone I'm a realtor. If I don't care, you get deleted. I'll give you an easy example because there's people like me out there. In my Google Gmail account and my KW email account, I have a filter set up. And the filter says any email that comes in with the word unsubscribe anywhere in the email, go to my junk folder. Which means I'm auto filtering every advertisement that comes to me in my email every day. So I don't see it. So the marketers are probably banging their heads against the wall because I'm one of the people that puts the filter in, right? Imagine if your clients are doing that to your messaging. That's a good filter to have. <laughs> it's a good filter to have, but the flip side, you have to know how to beat the filter, right? So that you can get your messaging through, right? That's part of the challenge. That's why marketing to your sphere, the information they want and what they want is so important. Because if you don't understand that 30%, almost 40% of your business comes from your database, that's the challenge. The second way people make money in real estate, rule number two, is open houses, which eventually makes them part of your sphere, right? So if you combine these two numbers together, right, almost 60% of your business comes from meeting people. Make sense? They are people business. Supposedly. But everyone all the time focuses on number three, which is online leads. And I always say that is the longest and most stressful and only 1% of online leads typically convert and takes you up nine to 12 months because you have to meet them and they're using the digital wall to not meet you because you're quote unquote a salesperson, right? And do we like salespeople? I just told you about my Tesla experience. Did I ever mention my salesperson? Nope. Why do I mess up on Amazon? It's quick, it's easy, fast. No salesperson. Don't talk to anyone. Let's go to the store. Let's go to the store. Right? I mean, I got rid of my Costco membership because of Amazon Prime. Like, why do I need to pay for Costco? I can just order from there. I don't want to waste the time of driving to the store. So my point is, you have to understand the world is filtering you out. And we still believe in this concept that I can mass market because I have a computer. And I just laugh over that because I'm just like, you don't get the fact that the world is deleting you without your knowledge. Our technology is designed to help you micro market on a mass scale, not mass market on a mass scale. You can mass market, but you're going to get deleted. I'll use a different example. We talked about before. I go to Disney World a lot, I'm a big Disney fan. Disney knows that I'm going to go four or five times a year. For the person like me, they send me different marketing messages and different communication than people who only go once every five years or once in their life, correct? Right? So in their strategy, they're going to mass market those people on TV, maybe a postcard, right? But to me, I get customized messages. Don't forget, this is your special deal. If you come now, don't forget, right? Your annual pass is retiring. Discount for this, discount. Get it? That's micro marketing. They know their audience. They know I'm going to be a frequent flyer there. They're going to micro market versus the mass marketing message. Make sense? That's where realtors have to catch up and understand we're in a micro marketing world to capture the sphere and open houses. Okay. The second part is 201 plus. It's really funny. We've tracked this data. You guys ever you guys know who Domino's Dan is? You know Domino's has this thing called the pizza tracker. This idea where once the pizza comes out of the oven, they can track how long it takes to get to your house and exactly where it is on the route. So you can look at the app and see where the pizza is. The guy who invented that's a guy named Domino's Dan. Domino's Dan works for Keller Williams. He started with us a year ago. We hired him to run all of our data analytics and analyze all this stuff. So he can track everything and teach us stuff about our data. Domino's Dan works for Keller Williams now. I love that. I love that, right? Gary Keller still calls him Domino's Dan in the meetings, by the way. Um, and it's funny, I met him last day uh, last of the reunion in Orlando. And he was like asking me all these questions because he had just joined us. He was learning about the life cycle of realtors. Real, and 
he's like, wow, that is all over the place, but totally like all over the place. So we had a long conversation, but this is what he realized in his first year that if you have 201 plus contacts to a thousand contacts in your database that are also on a smart plan, not just in your database, but also on a smart plan, you will earn $120,000 a year. That's micro marketing for you right there. Does that make sense? So why are we doing that? The room got funky. <laughs> We should all be doing it. Right, because look what happens. As you add more people to your database, you make more money. Remember what I said? Why they have databases? Why everyone's tracking you? Why they want you in their database? Because they know the size of their database determines how much they're going to sell to you. Well, my database has 3,700 contacts in it. Right? I earn more than that in my real estate business. Right? And that's your gross GCI number. But doesn't it say that the size of your database determines your pocketbook, your wallet. So I don't understand why we're not getting more people in our database assignment. And it's as simple as get them in command, tag how you met them, and add them to a smart plan. That's it. This is, I'm, I'm making it really simple because this is what I, I don't use the advanced stuff in command because I'm an advanced supposedly power user, but I don't use that stuff. You know why? It doesn't make you money. Right? Get them in command, get them on a smart plan, get them tagged. Amanda's like, why not they listening to me? I know you're doing the same thing, right? It's funny because I always tell our agents, you know, when we're looking at command, there's so much that it has to offer, but we can think of it like our phones, where we have so many apps, but we're only using a small handful of the same apps every single day. Right. And we can use that same mentality, just as you said, the contacts, the opportunities, and the smart plans. We focus on those three areas. Yeah. It's really the key to boost your business. I mean, I have probably eight different travel apps, and I probably only use three. United, because that's where I book my travel. Kayak, if I want to research prices, Marriott. Pretty much it. But I have the American app, the Delta app, the Frontier app, the Southwest app. I don't know why. Never use them. Never travel on them. They're here. Right? So I'm only using like 20% of the apps on my phone. Right? So let's break it down with simple. The more money you make is determined by the size of your database. That's it. And put a much more plan. So my question to you guys is why are we doing that? Dear I don't think our agents know how many different smart plans there are. Okay. And I think that they think they have to create the smart plan. Sure. And build it. Sure. And I I don't believe our agents have spent enough time in mm -hmm. command to see all of the variety of smart plans that are there that are set it and forget it. and forget it. right and that's probably the best answer i've heard to this question so thank you for that because it's truly um as like i said technology is overwhelming there's a million apps on my phone that i never use but they're still sitting there for some reason right and they get overwhelmed with choice because the world has got infinite choices now because again everything can be bought on here in two seconds so then they do nothing because they're afraid. Or if my mom used to say, I don't want to press that button on my computer. And I'd say, why? It's like, I don't know. I go, you're not starting World War III, mom. I, said, I promise you, this is not war games. You can you press the button. It's okay. Yeah, but well, uh, you know, that's fear. And again, you're totally right. You're totally right in this scenario. So let's go through just the evolution of the contact and what you're supposed to do real quick. Because the reality is I like to take all this tech stuff and I don't like to make a lot of choices. So just so you guys know how I run my business, every past client who's ever bought a home with me is on a bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. Okay, I have their address and command. They're all in a bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. Let's just keep it real simple, okay? Make sense? Which means I'm sending out 24 touches to my database out of the 36 we're supposed to send. Then I all have my past clients on a quarterly call plan, meaning I call them all once a quarter. So that's 28 touches now. I've got six, uh, eight more touches I have to do. I call them on their home anniversary date. That's one. I call them on their birthday. There's another touch. Somehow I have to find now six more touches, right? Christmas, Easter, New Year's, uh, July 4th, Arbor Day. I don't know, pick, pick another random holiday. Yeah, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And I send them just an email saying, well, you know, or a text saying, happy 
And that's it. And there's the 30 cents. Right? So I'm like, I, I'm a keep it simple, stupid person. As advanced as this stuff all is, I really like to make it simple because why are we overcomplicating this? Right? I guess that's why I like the Tesla. There's no key, there's no nothing. You just get in the car and then put it in drive and go. There's no thinking when you drive that car. You just like get in the car and go. So as much tech as there is, you really just then there's no gas in that car and there's no oil changes. There's nothing, right? You just get, get in and go. So the evolution of the content. So number one, you meet someone and you put them in your database or they're already in your database. Again, if they're looking to buy, you make an opportunity, add your tags, et cetera. If they're a future business, put them on a smart plan like a bi-weekly neighborhood nurture and a quarterly call plan. All right. If they're a buyer, send them property searches. You can do that in command. You do not have to use your MLS. I'm not sure if you guys realize that. Because if you send them property searches from in command, you can see what they like. If you send it from your MLS, you cannot see what they like. You have no way to track what you're doing. If they put it in favorites, then you can see. You can see it if they like it, favorite, view it, thumb it, share it with someone. Yeah, correct. Then you can see. Then you can see. Right, but it's, remember, the day you start getting them into your searches, you become an international realtor. You're not just tied to your MLS. If your client says to you, yeah, I want to buy a home in Tom's River, you can set up a safe search for them in Tom's River or Florida, just as easily as here in Rutherford. Like, one of my biggest referral checks was a client of mine who wanted to buy a home in London. He was a $20 million cash buyer. That was a good referral check because I was sending him alerts from command. When he was in London, he bought a house with his wife. That check was a good check, right? But the alerts came from me, not someone else. Make sense? So how do you set that up? I'll show you. Yeah, we'll show you. Amanda can show you as well. It's, okay. it, it takes like five steps. It's really easy. It's actually easier than the NJMLS and Garden State Safe Search. Yep. Um, if they're a seller, again, bi-weekly or monthly neighborhood nurture. And then reach out to everyone quarterly. Did we just talk about that? This is it. You're seeing how I run my entire business and my wife and I do 25 and 30 million in sales. That's it. Very simple. Questions, comments, or research? Any questions in the chat, by the way? I didn't know. No um, questions coming in. I'll oh. share your little words of wisdom. But I <laughs> by setting up search in command, you don't have to do it in multiple MLSs. Sure. Right? It's one step. One step. If you're doing it another way, you got to do it in NJ, you got to do it in right. Golden State, you got to do it in Hudson. Hudson. Yep. And yep. Why, why do all those steps when you can do one step, one search, and right. they'll get the feed from all of your. Right. And, and, and this is what I recommend. Put yourself in, this is how I started playing around with it. I put myself in the contacting command. I registered myself on my website as if I was a user, right? So I made a username and password. So that way the mobile app and the website looked like I was my own consumer, like I was buying my own home. And I created a safe search for Livingston where my market center is. I just called it all Livingston homes. And I put the zip code in and all the, and I had it send me alerts every time there's a new listing every 15 minutes. That's it, that's all I did. And the alerts come right here on my phone, even when the sucker's sleeping, They'll pop up and say, hey, you have a new this. Hey, you have a new that. Hey, you've got, right? So, yeah, that's it. Easy. Run yourself as your own test. Pretend you're your, you are your own client. See what happens. Pick a town, pick a zip code. It's fascinating, okay? So online leads, we'll talk about that real quick. There's three ways to do online leads. I call this Facebook mesh because I'm not on TikTok. I am on Instagram and Facebook, but I don't spend a lot of time there. Um, search engines and lead aggregators, Zillow, Ojo, Realtor.com. Again, this is the least bang for your buck, but we seem to spend more money on this. Well, there was something like, what was the number Gary Keller gave us? We sold 5 million homes, 6 million homes in the country last year. We sold 125 million leads last year. What does that tell you? We're selling the same names over and over and over again. And people are making a lot of money selling garbage. <laughs> Not crazy? So to thrive online, use Facebook ads in command to test your message. Test it. Like run an ad for seven days, spend about $25, see if that works before you up your ad spend. Right? Then you'll start running more ads with scale because you're going to start getting more leads and then make sure you have a really good follow-up plan in command 
to follow up and nurture those leads. Because unless you're planning on calling, I recommend you call them, but if you start getting 30 or 40 or 50 leads every year, it becomes a little, little arduous. Make sure you have a really good follow-up system to follow up with those leads, but you do have to call them because you need to see if they're real. If you're not going to call them, you're just throwing your money away. Everyone likes to, or you're not even texting them. You're just throwing your money away, right? They gave you their name and phone number. You might as well reach out to them, show them you're a person, right? Same thing with Google ads, TikTok, Instagram. Right now in command, you can run ads on Instagram and Facebook. Soon we're going to be turning on the Google ads, okay, as well. Right? Remember, immediate business, work with them now. Most online leads are eventual leads. They're nine to 12 month lead time. But if you don't have a good follow-up plan, you're not willing to call them every few months, not willing to show them why you need to do buyer's consultation, et cetera, you're just throwing your money away. You might as well write me a check. I'll gladly take them in, okay? Um, so again, in command, you create a campaign, you pick the house, you put your contact information in there. The audience definition from Facebook tells you how wide the ad's gonna go. So you have an idea of where it's going. And then the leads will just come back and write into your command system and you'll get alerted every time you have a lead, All right? Uh, same thing. So then property searches with your buyer, send them bi-weekly or monthly neighborhood searches with your seller. All right? Open houses. Who uses digital signing sheets? Am I the only one? You do use a landing page. I train command. the agents to do. Build a landing page and command. It's probably the number one thing because what most consumers do is when you have a sign in sheet at an open house and they fill it out, either you can't read the handwriting or we are 60% of the time giving inaccurate information on purpose. Isn't that funny? I actually have like on, for online like sweepstakes or drawings, a separate email address I use so that all the junk goes to there. If I happen to win, I get a notification of that is turned off. Crazy, yeah, right? I encourage the agents to use the landing page for that. It's I'm not like you know, right. you type it in. Well or what, let them do what it. What I do is I, I have them scan a QR code so it pops up on their phone because if it pops up on their phone, most phones fill up the form automatically with the contact information of the owner of the phone. And you, your accuracy rates between 97 to 98%, right? <laughs> of accuracy of data. So like I had a fake name the other day, fine. I mean, I can tell right away. I had, but of the, my open house, I had 15 people register of the families that came through. And I put them all on the smart plan as they're walking back to their car. I add them from my phone to the open house smart plan I've set up. And they're just getting a text message thanking them for coming to the open house as they're walking back to their phone, and then they get an email. And they all call me back and go, You're like the tech savvy realtor, you're green, you're this. I'm like, I don't really care. The cool part is, you registered online, I got accurate data, and I know it. That's really cool, right? Because now they're in my database. Again, the size of your database determines your success, right? So, can you back up? Did you say you can create a QR code for yes. the sign in sheet? Yep, mm -hmm. from the landing page. So I just, I put a, a pre-recorded video of this topic in the chat. Yep. Um, I'll share that with you guys as well. And I can always create a more updated. And I'll, I'm going to pull up my QR code from my recent open house. Scan it, see what happens on your phone. Yeah, I just recently saw when Maura did her buyer seminar. Yeah. I was there and I did it on the phone and it, it, works, yes. it works really well. And the great thing is, so what's the way I do open houses, um, I'm considered nuts in my office, but I'm the OP, so I guess I can be nuts. Um, all my open houses are 30 minutes long or one hour long. I don't like long open houses. I've never liked open houses that are longer than an hour. So you have to come to my open house in my time. I like the mass chaos of 45 people rushing into a house. That's just me. Even during COVID, um, we just took precautions. This Sunday, my last open house, I think we had 30 or 40 families through in a one hour open house. So my wife stands at the door because she's my business partner. She greets them, they scan the QR code. When they register with her, I get a notification on my phone that they registered and then I let them in. That's it. Simple, right? Just keep the system. Control chaos. And I'm a control freak, but I love the chaos because I want to make your home the Nordstrom Day after Thanksgiving Day sale house. If I do a one hour open house, I've done that. If I do a 30 minute open house, I really do that. <laughs> right? Like you see people get mad, watch people try to fight to get into a home for 2 to 2.30. Two it's fun. My seller's thing is great. My from the buyer hated, but I'm. Do curious. you customize your QR code? Yes, it's a different QR code. No, I just use the Google one. The Google one. Yeah, yeah. I use the Google one. Yeah. yeah. 
Google's easy. I don't know if you yeah. maybe put a little key down there. Yeah, I can show less. <laughs> That's yeah. why the Google one has that little dino. And I'm going to say some people may hate this little dino. I personally think it's cute and it's free and yeah. it works. Yeah. And no one's going to look at it and say, what is this? It's kind of like why I don't do property flyers anymore. Because one, when you open the landing page on your phone, my flyer is below the sign-in sheet. So all the information about the home is right in front of you on your phone, which is what you're looking at anyway. Half the time they're walking around your house doing this, right? And I have to tell them, I'm sorry, you can't take pictures. You're not authorized to, you're a stranger. Please put the phone down, it's illegal. So they're like, oh, all you need is right here on your phone. The flyer's right there. If you have any questions, I'll be here to answer it. But no one's ever said to me, wow, great flyer on my phone. Like that's never happened in the history of real estate. What did they say? Great kitchen, nice yard. And, but no one ever said, wow, Steve, what a great flyer you made. I'm going to buy this home. They took their car after they visited all the open houses. Where do you think the flyers are? Going? So I'd rather have the digital flyer on the phone. Right? So again, you prepare your landing page. I do all these on Friday afternoons between like four and five. I create my landing page. I run a test to make sure the QR code works. I do the capture screen. I, I register myself for my own open house to see if it, the lead's working. Right. And then I make sure my smart plan's ready so that as they're leaving the open house, I tag them with the smart plan and off they go. Make sense? Yeah. So here's an example of what one looks like. And the buyer comes in automatically from the landing page. They, oh, they put a 212 number for a Florida realtor. And then you put their notes in, and then they add them to the open house smart plan. And then you get notifications on your phone or on your, on your Apple Watch. Pretty amazing, right? Nice and easy. Questions, comments, stories, jokes. Make sense? Okay, cool. Um, go forward. One thing to note is you see where it says contact tag trigger? Contact tag trigger means when you apply this tag, the smart plan starts automatically. So for my open house last week was a 12 Dorian Road. I created a tag called 12 Dorian Road, which means when I apply that tag to the lead that showed up at the open house, the smart plan starts. That's how I automate the process. Okay, so I create the open house smart plan on Friday. I add the tag to the open house smart plan. And then when people leave the open house, I just go into command on my phone and add the tag. Do you, smart move, plan them? Starts. Do you move them from one tag to the other tag and remove the tags? No. So you keep them on the open house? Or yeah, and I want to know how I met them until they convert. And then if they convert to a buyer, they get a buyer tag, but the original open house tag stays there. So that's to see how effective I am. Yeah, make sense? Yes. Cool. When um, you were creating the smart plans for every open house that you're hosting, are you essentially just taking your previous open house smart plan, recreating it for that new address? Yes, I have a template and I just change, I, I, I copy it, change some two fields in the app, in the, in the smart plan, just two fields and rename it and retag it. Yeah. Okay. Um, again, same thing. You meet someone at an open house, immediate business, eventual business. The process is the same regardless of what happens when you get a lead. It's simply a matter of how you're going to convert them, right? Sphere of influence, the big one. Okay. People do business with people they like. Hence why sphere is your biggest source of business, which is why when you're doing an open house, your job is to get them as part of your sphere, right? That's the goal. Technology allows us to be like, more likable to more people more often, as long as we're sending them messages that they care about, right? That's why the bi-weekly neighborhood venture works so well. I have a client whose home, those one I just lifted on 12 Dorian Road. I don't talk to them on a regular basis. But I saw through Command Mobile that they were opening the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture a lot. And I said to my wife, I wonder if the Weber's are moving. And two days later, Elise called me and said, hey, Stephen, come over and move. You come list the house. Mark did the heavy lifting, right? I didn't call them as much as I should have. I know their house. I sold it to them in 2007. You didn't have to spend any really money marketing to them or sending them postcards in the mail. But they've been getting my smart plan for years. They called me up. Stephen, come over and list the house, right? The most important thing is to run a powerful touch campaign to your sphere because your network is going to determine your net worth. That's reality. That's a Gary Keller quote. And boy, is that right. Your network is your net worth. Questions about that? That's like a big one for me. I think if we simplify command to that, 
and run your clients on a really effective bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, or not even clients, let's just say you're new to real estate, and you have a bunch of people you know, put them on the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. You're going to get them interested in it, and you'll be able to track from your phone how active they were with the data you're sending out. Believe me, people care about what's happening in their neighborhood and what it costs them. They really want to know. Has everyone talked about it? Because every time interest rates go up and down, what is the new thing? Interest rates went up, the market's down. Interest rates went down, the market's up, whatever, right? It's a three second news item. But for some reason, people care. Yes? So um, change your habits, get into using command on a day to day basis. If you're new to command, I'd recommend you spend 15 minutes a day in it. That's all you really need to do to get used to the habit. Any way to start a new habit is doing something for 66 straight days for five to 10 minutes a day. That's really it. You want to lose weight? Go to the gym for 66 straight days. Actually, my trainer said to me, you can't add exercise and then diet. And I am a definite person who agrees with that statement. Because I exercise with her multiple times a week, and I also play hockey on Sundays, and I still cannot add, add exercise and diet. Will they eat healthier or feel better? Okay, now I know. So same thing, it's all about habits. Um, again, a powerful sphere of influence campaign. One, a combination of mailings, letters, calls, emails, monthly neighborhood or bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. Because if you do bi-weekly, this 12 goes to 24, right? Thank you cards, note cards, four telephone calls. And there you go, there's your 36 touches. Okay. Um, things you can do for your touches. Send a Starbucks gift card, have an ice cream truck event, do an Easter egg hunt, Santa pictures, pie giveaway, golf tournament, shredding party. I love the shredding party one because they come to you versus you go to them with a giant shredding truck, right? Pumpkin patch, swag giveaway, blood drives, anything. Photos are, are a big one. Everyone I've already been sent on photos with Santa, photos with the Easter bunny, it's right. all photos. That's right. Good one. I love that one. Your dog, etc. Okay. Again, same thing. Comes an opportunity. Comes a smart plan. Go. Okay. Questions, comments before I go into like the tech part of using my phone. Thoughts, feelings. Does it make sense? Yes. Does it seem that difficult? No. Okay. How come we're not doing it then? <laughs> well, I just said you reach out. Oh, there's an excuse. No, don't do that. But I'm very familiar with command and I'm pretty good, I think, if I say so. But <laughs> you are, you are. So I'll go into a little bit of like running your phone from your business part of sharing, screen sharing, etc. Like technology. So, yes. No, exactly. But even though you are newer, you have been diving in and learning on your own. And Steve said, spending at least that 15 minutes, and you're going to become an expert at it in, in time and in your own way. Um, that's I mean, the case with everyone. Whether it's you've been here a couple months, it doesn't matter if you haven't mastered it yet, because as we've discussed, there is so much to learn and so much to master. I mean, look at taking it step by step. Look how many apps I have on my phone. Like, I barely use like which have those the apps that you have. So the apps I use a lot, obviously my lockbox key, there's my United app, the red, the Tesla app to drive the car, because you can't drive a car unless you have the app, app. right? Really? Um, there's okay. How about the steering wheel? Te te no, no, Tesla came, Tesla came up with the first car you can't steal because they do give you a, a Tesla gives you a um, like a key, a valet key that's like it looks like a credit card, but the car only goes 20 miles an hour with the valet key. So you actually can't steal Tesla because there's absolutely no key. So unless they think I have a phone or my wife's phone, there's, it's not going anywhere. Um, there's it's not sharing on the Zoom, probably not on the screen mirror. Oh, um, that's a challenge. I think if you go to share screen yep. and yeah, and see, like I told them yesterday when we brought Ira in, and now with Steve here. It makes more sense to the agents when they hear it from somebody that's okay. doing it. Oh, oh. Okay. You can see it. Start screen sharing, but it's not like you can tell when it's on your screen. Oh, I know why. Oh. 
We're getting there, team. It's not a class without a minor hiccup. Of course. You know that? A little better. There we go. Perfect. Boom. We're on. So, I mean, I have the devil's one because I go to devil games and see ticket holder. I read the New York Times every day. Um, there's my banking apps. But most of the apps I don't really use. They're just kind of there. Fun. But certain things have to be there, like the Tesla app, because my wife drives Tesla more than I do, but I want to drive a car, things like that. So, again, running your business from your phone. The red app, just so you know, is command. The white app is your website. Thanks. Right? Just a couple of things about the white app first, just so you guys know, to go through the white app really quickly. Every one of your clients should get the white app. Every past client, every friend, everyone you meet. How do you share it? Right? Real simple. Remember I said register yourself as a consumer? Okay. If you register yourself as your consumer, I'm registered in my app as if I was a consumer looking to buy a home. You see the more button in the lower left corner? Yes. Okay. When I press the more button, and I scroll down, one, you should be branded as your own agent up here at the top. So you're sharing your app. And as you scroll down, it says share the KW app. And when you press share, you can text it to people. Okay. Also, a new feature we just added is your clients can change the language of the app, right? That's huge, right? We actually can share you know, data in multiple languages. Portuguese, Turkish, French, Spanish, et cetera. We're waiting for a couple more languages. Any questions on that? Does that make sense? Yeah, and there is a contact, correct, Steve, in, uh, in your command where you can send your, your mobile app sure. to all of your contacts. Yeah, your just share the link. Yeah, there's a smart plan that does it. Yep. Yep. A couple other things, if you click the arrow, the white arrow, that centers you wherever you are. So that will take to you to where you're standing. Uh, but a couple other things you can do in the app that you can't, what I'm about to show you, no other real estate broker can do, no other real estate agency can do, no, Zillow can't do this. If you have a client who says, I want to live next to a certain restaurant, or I want to live next to a high school, or I want to live near a certain grammar school, you can actually type that point of interest. I want to live near a certain synagogue because I can walk, right? You can actually come in and type in, like, I want to live near Rutherford High School. What's the closest homes? Yeah. Right? Oh, Sorry for my big fingers. So there's the high school, and these are the closest properties to it. I can do a restaurant. Again, I can do a certain grammar school, pick, pick. It even does slang words. Like I had someone yesterday in New York City say, type in PS321, which PS is slang for public school, which no one knows outside of the New York area. Right? That's not a common term. And if you do PS321, there's PS321 in New York. And these are the closest houses to PS321. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? And you want the really full part? We have an exclusive with Google on this for that technology on the back end. They can't sell it to any other real estate company. So, so Compass them will never have this unless they build it. Zillow can't have this. EXP can't have this. Only we have it. It works the same way on your website as it does on the mobile app. Yeah, I just did it and it's great. Amazing, right? Yeah. Like I had someone say to me in Long Island a couple of weeks ago, the slang word for synagogue is shul, S-H-U-L. That's a, that's a Yiddish word. So he types in, he said to me, type in Woodmere shul, just to see, because that's not the name of the synagogue. It came up in a half second. He's like, wow, you even have slang? I said, yeah, he's a compass agent. He was like, I'm joining. <laughs> he's like, that was, that was crazy. And you can just type in Woodmere Shul and up comes everything for that synagogue within walking distance in a half second. 
that makes sense? Yes. yes. Imagine if you created, uh, when you sent out your mobile app to your database with just a couple of these key points in it. Sure. To set their excitement. Right. Then they'll download it and use it. Right. Or the other thing I do is I say, um, I sent a custom text and it said, here's the app link. I've registered you as a user already with my website. Your username is your email. Your password is your cell phone number. So you've already done the registration for them. So then when they open the, the download the app and they already know what their username and password is, they're faster to use it. <clears throat> okay. Hey, Steve. Yes. Cool. Hey, Steve. Yes. Hey, Steve, Mike Trubino. Good morning. Uh, great information. Um, when you started, you opened up the app like you did now. Um, so I do that. It opens up regular. And then when I hit guide, it asked me to sign in. Like my right. So you're not registered with your own app. So until you're registered as a user with your own app, you won't. You have to create your own username and password. You have to become a consumer as if you were looking to buy a home. So register yourself in your own app. That way, all the features will turn on. So for example, if you click the more button in the lower corner, you should right. have your name at the top. If you don't, you have to register yourself. Yeah, my name is at the top on that screen, but when I hit guide, yep. it doesn't. It asks me to sign in. Then you have to sign in because it's not registered. It's not active. Okay. Well, it right. to, once I do that, I won't probably have to do it again then, right? After that, you know. Well, yeah, once you do it once, you're good, unless you somehow break the connection. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Yeah. That's right. No problem. And like sometimes I reset my password and use it in so that's how the connection breaks. Yeah, I would recommend using your KW email and using the same password you use for command. Correct. Just to make it easier on yourself. Correct. Right. Thank you. When, when you want to look at a home, click the home. You can scroll up and it shows you all the details of the home. If your client wants to see the home, they can ask you questions about it at the bottom. They can see all the details about the property. They can share this home with a friend. Let's say they have a a husband, wife, spouse, et cetera, all they have to do to share this listing when they're looking at it is click the arrow in the upper right hand corner and they can quickly share the listing with anyone. Which again, gets you more users in your app, which means you're being able to see what your consumers are doing, okay? Uh, questions, comments, stories. And again, searching in the app, whether you're searching locally or around the world, it's just as easy as you just did, okay? In command for mobile, on the mobile side, that's the red app. Again, real quick, is the red one. And that's where you're going to run your business. So remember I said the first thing you should do is send out smart plans. When you open command mobile every day, click the recently active button. When you click recently active, that tells you who's interacting with your marketer. We started this whole class with the concept of micro-marketing on a mass scale. That's what we're talking about. Micro marketing on a mass scale. So I can see that Sherry Beth, who's my personal trainer, by the way, so I have a relationship with her, has interacted with my marketing four hours ago. Pam had interacted the day ago. So the first thing you should do every day is when you have smart plans going out, is come into Command Mobile, see who was recently active, and click it. Are you able to see what they had looked at? Or what they it had depends. Done? Remember, if, if most of these people in my world, are past clients, which means they're all getting the bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. What are they looking at? The bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, because that's the only thing they're getting from me. I don't want to confuse them with too many marketing messages, right? If they're a lead with the L, then they're a buyer, and they're looking at houses. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Where it says under Sherry, it says less contacted. Um, you know, again, and not being too good at that, uh, the mobile mm -hmm. stuff, it, that would mean to me that I less contacted them. Right. So, this, that doesn't this, mean they were they were active or looking at something, right? No, last contact means they got some piece of marketing from me that they clicked uh, on. Oh, they clicked on it. Gotcha. Yeah. It's one thing to get the marketing. It's something else to click on. Yeah, okay. Because in the desktop app, um, last contacted when I, you know, do that. On yeah. the con that that'll tell me when I contacted them. Correct. This is this will tell you what that they recently contacted. Great. You, and they interact with your marketing. Wow. Okay. wow, that's a that's yeah. a that's a freaking game changer. Thank you. Sure. Other things to note when you're looking at a contact card here, you can see the timeline at the top. You can look at the deals you've done for them and past opportunities for that particular client. 
You can look at the smart plans they're on. You can add them to a smart plan here. If you want to add them to another smart plan, just click the plus sign in the lower corner and pick the smart plan you want. Okay. The notes you have, the tasks you have, all are here. And if you just want to go back to the beginning and click, I want to call them, there's call, text, and email buttons at the bottom, or I can just click their phone number and call. Can we make this any easier? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what more I can do to make this any easier and tell you guys, like, how come you're not using this? Right? Because, like, I run all my business on this. I never go on the desktop version. I just open this up every day, go to my recently active, and that's what I call first. And not only does it make it super easy for you to do that outreach from the app, but after you click that call, text, or email button, you send that correspondence. As soon as you are back in the command app, it automatically pops up. Do you want to log this interaction? Sure. So this is amazing to yeah. keep track of every time you're talking with a, a prospective client. You can be sure you are knowing exactly right. what these conversations have been. So I want to add this activity to our timeline. Okay. A couple other things to note. Um, if you click the three dots next to her name, you can share your KW app with her right there. Mm -hmm. The future. I love it. You can just share. I want to share Shire Best my app link. It's right there. Neat, right? I love it. Yeah, that's new. Okay. Can you do that? Right. So next to her name in the upper right hand corner, there's three dots. Click the three dots and it says share the KW app link. Right? So far, so good. Yes. Cool. Um, I just did it to somebody. Cool. Love it. I'm going to show you one feature right now that you don't have, because this is version 1.6 that you have of the app. I have version 1.7 that I'm testing out. I love, absolutely love this new feature. I cannot believe it took us this long to put it in. Um, in the new version that will be out probably right after the reunion when we're done testing it, when you click the, the word, your, your logo or the word contacts in the upper left-hand corner, there's going to be this My Business card and someone can scan your QR code and it'll dump into their phone. What? So you have your own digital business card. Wow. So when they go to open houses, they could say, this is my agent? No. Can, it, can, it, if I send it to you and you're my client, can you go to an I don't know about that one, but this allows you to get, I, I'm not the reverse yet. We haven't tested. We haven't gotten that far yet. Right? Because okay. think about it. Who's yeah, your no, agent? I get it. How many I times they said, What's my agent's name? Yeah, I say to them, if you were thinking that hard, you don't have an agent. That's, I agree. <laughs> That's and, then, and, then I ask, and then I ask the next question. Did you sign a buyer's agency agreement? They go, what's that? I go, we should sit down and talk. And that's all I said. When can we meet? You need to understand the value of a buyer's agent. If you can't remember your agent's name, they're not your agent. Sorry. All my clients signed a buyer's agency agreement with me. I don't. And they have no problem signing it. No, I, you, you, you're going to laugh. Before the mortgage meltdown of 2008, I used to charge buyers $500 to get in the car. You, you paid me an upfront transaction fee before we even drove to go see a house. And if you weren't willing to pay $500, then we weren't looking at houses. Now I know what you're saying. Why would they pay you $500 when I'm doing it for free? And I would say, you're buying my brain. It's like a copay when you go to the doctor. You don't complain when you go to the doctor to pay a copay. If you're worried about $500, and you're buying a $500,000 home, we have different issues to worry about because there's more zeros than what you can purchase. So Steve, no one argued with that, by the way. They were that, like, that's okay. <laughs> right? That's you can tell I'm very, I'm very scripted. Can you tell I'm like, <laughs> go ahead. So Steve, that's your business card right yes, there. So what, I, I, I love that. I, I just tried to scan it as well. I think that it's just a dummy yeah. for right now in the testing phase. Yeah, the testing phase. Yeah. But it should be once it's live, live yeah. that if they went there, right. somebody else, another agent, should be able to take that right. picture and then they would have the buyer. Yes, yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah not, that's what I was saying. Yeah, that's yeah, what that's what we we're not there yet. I, we're I, asking the other realtor to be as smart as us. I can't predict that the other realtor is technologically literate. Our industry is not technologically literate. I text my clients my business card, an actual picture of it, so that they have it with them. Right. They're not carrying my Correct. business card, but at least they have my picture. So, and I, I'll call the agent and say, I can't come. 
<laughs> Good, that means you're a professional. Thank you. I'm trying. No, trying is feeling with honor. You're actually doing it. So, yeah. If I know they know yes. what that is. Yeah, no, I get it. A couple other things to note in here that we just upgraded. When you click the three arrows in the bottom corner next to the bell, the notification bell, you can go into your opportunities. This is great because it's a it's a um, more graphically friendly way of seeing your sales pipeline. So you have your cultivate appointment stage. You can look at your pipeline, all your deals, what's closing soon. You can change this layout, by the way, by clicking the manage layout button in the upper right hand corner. Um, so if I want to see like my listings I'm working on and what's active, these are the potential listings that are active right now. Well, these are buyers, I'm sorry, buyers who are looking for homes. Again, same thing with listing. And I can look at my active listings. So like 12 Dorian when I'm, is in negotiation stage right now. So I can just click it and drag it to the negotiations tab and move it. So you can run your whole pipeline from here. And if you want to expand the details, you can see all the details. If I needed to call my client right now, I can actually click their name and call them. So it's all interactive for you to work in a completely mobile environment. The only thing you can't do is create and edit a smart plan from here. You can add a smart plan to a contact. You can't create an edit. You can't make a design. You can't send a bulk text. That's pretty much about it. Everything else you can run from your phone. So, that's a question. Yes, for the non tech audience. Go for it. An agent goes and gets their CO. They're about to close. Yep. Do they have the ability by taking a picture with their phone? Not yet. We, we can't upload documents in the mobile yet. I know that's on the roadmap. Like, yeah. I need to see the roadmap even before Amanda sees the roadmap. So, yeah, that's on the roadmap. Yeah, that would be great to upload the CEO right the Yeah. Yeah, totally. However, you would have the person's email address right there. You can always scan yeah. it and right. email it regularly. That's correct. A hundred percent. I'm just thinking, uh, you know, my, my brain is five steps yes. ahead of no, yes. to make so much... your life yeah. easier. <laughs> it's all about programming. Like we really did. It's so funny. So we have this technical term called an edge case. You guys know what an edge case is? An edge case is my phone does these things and I love it. I wish it could do. Mm -hmm. And then the question is how many people are actually going to use that feature? Right. For example, I had a realtor from another brokerage send me, uh, who joined a KW office in our area, and the team leader called me like, command can't do what their other CRM did at Wiper. And I said, okay, what did they do? They were sending out 47,000 emails three times a week to their database. You hear that? I said, well, no CRM for a realtor can do that. That's a level of like Coca-Cola or Home Depot or Amazon or Disney or Right, that that's a, that that you need a separate email server so you're not blacklisted. Mailchimp, and, and oh, so that's the Mailchimp will, will let you send out like ten to twenty thousand a week, not forty seven thousand three times a week. That we're talking over one hundred fifty thousand emails, which was over one point five emails a year. Her ROI on that was horrible, and and we're like, this is not right. So when we finally got video and details, and I dug into the fine print at the bottom. This brokerage was taking everything out of their CRM manually, adding it to another system, scrubbing it, and then going to a third system to email it out and doing this manually for her to make her happy. When she was threatening to leave to go back to that brokerage, she had only been with us a week, right? So that's an edge case, right? Like, like that's a real edge case. When we really got into the nitty gritty of it, we found out that there were only 2,700 actual emails in her database. And everything else was a duplicate or had been deleted or, or blocked. So this company was busy taking all this stuff through this process to make her happy when knee deep with only 2,700 actual emails going out. And we've got through the 2,700, we can do that with our us. That's an edge case, right? Yeah. So when you talk about like what you're saying, it's not an edge case because there's enough people that have made that feature request, but how many people will use it is always a debate. We say, oh, I wish the technology did. Well, then how many people use it? They're all 80 20 old, right? Only 20% of the people use you know all the features, right? Yeah, well, you could see you're on a listing appointment and you want a copy of the deed. Oh. Um, yep, correct. Yeah, believe me, it's it's all the stuff that we talk about, and then it's all about everything that we launch in the future, just so you guys know from a product roadmap, is mobile first. So when we see new features in command. 
every new feature that comes out is mobile first, which is really cool. So mm -hmm. that's why I know it's on the roadmap for you. I just don't know where it is. I'm not, I don't, I don't go to programming meetings. Thank God. They just show me the roadmap. Do you have something like suggestion from the agents going ideas.kw.com? If you have a suggestion, go to ideas.kw.com, put your suggestion in or search to see what's there and vote the ones you like up. The ones you vote up actually get on the roadmap. That, yeah, well, this is Gary's going to listen to you, right? Gary understands we're here for the agents. So that's what we're built around. So we have this website, ideas.kw.com. Put in your suggestion or see the suggestions there. Your suggestion was voted up. That's how I know it's there. So we get, we get to see the votes. We don't even vote. The agents vote. Questions about how to run the mobile apps? Anything at all about that? Does that make sense? Easy? Yes? No? Maybe so? You can even add a new opportunity right from within here and create opportunities on the fly. It's a big eye opening, Steve. Thank you. It was really, I mean, you know. No sweat. Um, uh, so you guys, a, and some it's, it's, it's related to the de the desktop app. Just yes. one. Um, so when I when I send my link right through email, yes. um, and they get it and they click on it, if they go to guide, it will ask them if they want to find an agent. Whereas on right. the um, whereas on the mobile app, you know, kind of just you know go. It doesn't do that. Is that is that something because of the internet or whatever the desktop mm -hmm. stuff? Yes, anyway, ask the question again. Okay, so so when I send my mobile app right through the phone, um, you know, and they go on it, and 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 they click guide, like right. all, my, all my stuff, whatever to do is up there. But right. um, when I send it through email from my laptop, and they get it, when they click on it, if they hit guide, it'll say find an agent. So it's a little. So, and, and, and are they already registered with you? Did you create a username and password for them? Um, it's a good question. So that might be the answer. That, that, that's the answer. Again, my recommendation is before I send out my link to my app, whether I'm doing it through email or text, I make sure they're in command. I send them a text message or email that says, here is your um, link to my website or link to my mobile app. By the way, your username is your email address and your password is your cell phone number. And they know that when they open that up, if they do that, then everything shows the way I want it to show because they're branded to me now. Ah, uh, so so tell them that the username is is your email and the password. Right. Great, right. thank you. So no, when they get the link, it doesn't show them what their username and password. No, and to that point, I set that up for them first. I need setting that up for them. Yes, I know it's an extra step for me to do. However, I know when they register, when I register them for my site or my mobile app, they're already in and everything's turned on and it looks better. So connected to their contract. Connected to their contract record and connected to their record in command. So you look like the hero because you've now guided them as their realtor concierge, if you want to call that. So, so you so send them up? So on the know? reverse, if you send them the mobile app, yeah. what yeah. happens? And you, you have, have to go to the more section and then choose find an agent and choose you as an agent. And it, it will ask them to sign up and register, which then then they're going to be created as a lead in your command. Wow! If you just send them the link blindly, but now, yeah. if I'm doing it the other way, I like that first step because there's a personal connection there. There's a reason why I'm sending them my link. Right? There's a reason why I'm doing this. But you have to tell them to register with their phone, uh, email, and phone number. Yes, that's why I and that's why I do it for them. Though, but, but people are inherently lazy. Do yeah. you agree? The, the, the difference between those who succeed in real estate and those who don't succeed is laziness. Could you show them where in command they do that? What do you mean where in command? Where they register, oh, how they so, get the user, create the username and password. Yeah. So let me just share my screen again. Um, and I'll do it from the desktop version. Because I think that if you show them how to do it, I think it'll, yeah. it'll so, resonate them. Do you see, are you guys going to see my, my, my page? Yep. Okay. You see here it says log in. I'm going to pretend that Stephen Gendel, the realtor, is registering a client. Okay. So that person's already in my command, for example. They're already, I've already added them as a contact in command. Make sense? And I want to register them. So all I do is I press log in. I put their email address here and their password here. I log in once to make a connection. One time and make the connection. 
And now we see how it says feed, guide, saved. My name's up here. And then I send them a link to this website or to my mobile app and said, congratulations, I've already set you up on my website and my mobile app. Your username is this, your password is that. That's it. That, that's how easy it is. I would does, that make, does, that, does that make sense? So then, now that could that person save searches that I've created for them are automatically here. Mm -hmm. Everything that I've saved set up for them is automatically here for them. And they always go, wow, thanks. I appreciate that. Wow, thanks. I appreciate it. Like it's it's yeah. all that. That's good. Okay. But they use the the password. Those two steps, they're automatically, you You are 100% certain then right. that they're branded to you. To me, that's right. They're coming into my world. And, and to have it all linked together, you, you have to have kind of their email and their phone number, right? You can't make Correct. it. Correct. You need their email or cell phone. Great. That's good, man. But like I said, that, that's the fastest way to do it and the easiest. Yeah, that's great. And, and, and it also means they're, they, they, if you have their cell phone and email, they probably want to work with you anyway, or they know you on some level. So it's not like you're blindly doing it. You can send a mass text to your whole database that says, hey, I've registered you. Your username is this, your password is that, and here's my app link. Just make sure you've done that and it's ahead of time. Okay? So that it's you one extra step. Everyone. You register everybody well, on their one by one, right? Yes, correct. Okay. One by one. Yes. Yeah. But, but that way it's maybe easy for you to come in and just like, oh wow, these are everything for sale. Let me see. Right. That's great. Yeah. In the past, I had advised clients to run it by our agents to run it by their clients prior to creating that account. Is that something that you would recommend? Yes, yes. Okay, but if it, it's not a negative thing if no. you were to create it on their behalf without giving them that rundown. No, nope, so okay. completely your choice. Okay. Um, you guys were asking before about like QR codes. So like this is our this is how we do the sign in sheet for the open house. Um, this was the one we did last Sunday. Um and you're welcome to scan the QR code and see what pops up on your phone and what it looks like. But it just says, welcome to 12 Doreen Road for a digital flyer and to register for the open house, please scan the QR code and fill out our online form on your phone. That's it. And what pops up on your phone looks kind of like, let me just find it. What, what pops up on your phone is this. And this is the digital flyer that's on their phone. And all the details of the property and all the photos, etc. That should pop up on your phone. Right? Yes. And that yeah. landing page Steve created was in command. Right? I created that all in command on Friday. It, you don't, so just so all the agents realize you don't need to go to one of and spend money on a subscription no. or another company to create landing pages. pages. No. You've got the ability in command to do it all. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm cheap and I also want to leverage my time. Like one thing, if you don't know about me, I'm, I'm all about leveraging my time and I follow scripts for the letter. I'm very script based. And I practice scripts every day, every morning and I am to the letter of, of leverage. Because there's no way in heck that I should be able to do what I do, right? And you really know part of my story, but like you guys know my background? So my background, real quick. So I was in, in technology for ten years. Um, the last piece of software I sold in, in two thousand two was artificial intelligence software. Go back with me. I was with a Fort Lee software company that made artificial intelligence software twenty years ago. No, we didn't. Couldn't call it artificial intelligence. I got out of that business to be a realtor because my son had life saving brain surgery and he was three years old, and I got fired when he was on life support from the software company. I worked at. Yeah, not a good day. <laughs> not a good day. Um, I got my real estate license four months later. Um, my wife told me we were getting divorced because you got your real estate license because her parents are realtors and my parents are realtors. Can you imagine what family dinners are like with everyone in your family is in the real estate industry. I'm a fourth generation realtor. My wife's a third generation realtor. She said, okay, you can, you can be, stay a realtor on one condition and one condition only. You cannot work with your mother. You cannot work with my father. You got to prove to them you can do it on your own. Okay, no problem. And the bet with my, my father loved the commercial. I didn't want to do that. The bet with my mom was if I outsold her, I had shit to work for me. And she's like, you're not going to outsell me. You're brand new. Well, I outsold her by the middle of my second year. All because of websites and technology. I was generating leads. Like, 
all while this was going on, my son had 50 brain surgeries. And I was in mental hospital with him. So I had to learn how the technology was going to leverage my time because I didn't have time. We, we, we live in Livingston. We go to Hackensack. I didn't have time to race back and forth to sell housing. So I had to find ways to leverage my time with the technology so I could make more money. So one of the things I did at Hackensack, we, we take Wi-Fi for granted. But in 2004, was there Wi-Fi? No, not everywhere. They had just put the access points in Hackensack. I went to the IT guys and I said, here's the kids of beer. Can I have Wi-Fi? And they said, no, it's not turned on yet. And I said, great. And the next day I came with three pizzas. I said, can I have Wi-Fi? And they said, no, it's not turned on yet. The next day I came with donuts. They said, here's your access code. <laughs> okay. You should have said, can I help you turn it on? Yet? But this was turned on. It's like I could see the lights were flashing. So they were running tests. So I was able to then create a, a Word document that I could type and I could send it to clients to fill out who then either bring it back to my office or I did an e-fax when I get it to the nurse's station at the hospital over the internet. And now I had a digital version. You would sign it and I would rescan it back to myself and email the realtor, right? So this is how I was selling houses in Hackensack even though all my business was in Essex County. Right? I had to find leverage and time and savings. So that's kind of how I got into this crazy business of leverage time and scripting. And without all that, I wouldn't have time to do this. Because my son liked a lot of stuff. I automated myself out of a job once. You know, that happens. How was your son doing? He passed away last year, actually. But he's okay. So sorry. That's okay. He did. He, he maximized his life for 22 years. And he survived a lot. And for a kid who spent four years of his life up at Hackensack, he went to Disney World 20 times. He played soccer, he got out of his wheelchair to play soccer and hockey and rode horses and went to Broadway shows and went to Boston and went to DC and did a lot. So went to school, I was uh, you know, he did the kid like maximize his life. So thank you for asking, but I appreciate it. But everything was about scripting, leverage, and time. Because I never knew when my phone was gonna ring and my wife would say, Meet me at the hospital, we're having emergency neurosurgery in an hour. And those calls happened on listening appointments. Right, the little old lady that almost had a heart attack. When I, I never answered my phone on a listening appointment, it's home in Belleville. And my wife did, me, did, did the 911 text. You know, like I looked down at it and I said, I'm so sorry, I have to call my wife. This is urgent. My son's in the hospital right now. And it was, get your ass back here. <laughs> We're having emergency neurosurgery in half an hour. And he was already in the ICU. And I said, lady, 6% is not the goddamn four. <laughs> And she goes, what? I go, my son's having emergency neurosurgery in him and I was going to that get for him. And I, she signed. I'm like, he'll be okay. I'll call you later. And I raced back to the hospital and scanned all the paperwork to myself. I get emails with people I need to do an email. So all this tech stuff is about leveraging time so you can maximize your business. Okay. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's the open house sign-in sheet. Again, what is the thing to note when you're looking at a contact and you've registered your contact in command? And I'll pull up my contact cover um, in command. When you see this little um, green bar and the L that's a lead with the green filled in, that means the connection has been made, meaning they you created their username and password on your website or mobile, and either you've registered them or they've registered them. Right? So if you want to know, did someone register? You've done that for them. If it's just a, a lead, and the green circle is not filled in, there's no connection. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, anything else? I don't know, what other questions do you guys have? Um, not a question per se, but just on your open house sign-in sheet that you had created, um, I just wanted to point out that form, we don't have the ability to tweak yes. what we the information Correct. collect, but I really like what you did where you said, um, Please sign in and fill out the notes section with how you heard about our event. Yes. And then giving someone a prompt because you have to fill in that notes section in order to submit the form. Correct. I've suggested in the past, you know, in that notes section, let me know if you're working with an agent or not. Right. But by having that written out on top of the form, I think that's great right. because someone knows what to put. Either they write Zillow, um, your website, an agent, don't know. It's an agent, I know they have an agent, right? Um, and then that's how I know they're going to Correct. Yep. And oh, that's great. Yeah, and then I get the lead notification. We add, like you can see the example here, like this is the, the smart plan that got set out, right? Thank you for visiting 12 Dorian. Our goal is to make the journey you want fun and easy. We've created this app to help you, right? And then just the smart plan started automatically when the people register. 
So, questions, comments, or jokes? Is that a lot? Is that a joke for <laughs> funny what you said. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. I appreciate your time. Um, hope to see you guys again soon. I'm down the street in Livingston if you need me. One more thing if for some reason you forget everything I just taught you, okay, <laughs> and you're stuck and it's eight o'clock at night, don't call me. Okay? <laughs> don't call me. And don't call no, <laughs> but you can everything I everything I just showed you is on answers.kw.com. This is my lifesaver because you know what happens? You guys have a tech problem and you go to Amanda. And Amanda goes into Slack and she sends me a Slack message. And I go here and I send her the link and I go, Amanda, here's the answer. Right? That's really guilty. You know exactly what I do, right? And for me, then I have to send a ticket or Amanda sends a ticket. But pretty much 99% of the time, I go here. But if you want to know everything you need to talk about the command app, it's right there. So it's answers. Yeah. The answers dot kw.com. And I literally can click on add a leader contact with your hand out, and there's a video of how to do it and the step by step on screen instructions. We, we can't make this any easier, right? No, man, they they email email at the bottom, right? They, yeah. Yes, yeah, you have the links. Yeah, yeah. So, 90% of the time, the regional tech, yeah, as a regional tech trainer, I get questions from 40 different market vendors. My wow. agent doesn't know how. I literally go here and send them the link back. <laughs> okay. Answers at kw.com. Like it's nine o'clock at night, it's midnight, it's all here. Everything that you can do in command, yes. step by step, is here. So instead of going and searching it on YouTube, just go to answers.com. Here's a video. And if you can't follow it there, then go to YouTube and look up Martin Miller. He's not the most video. Yeah. 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 Answers.com. Having trouble with DocuSign and creating an envelope. Like literally everything is here on what to do. Okay. I had a, I had a market center this morning, so I was walking in here. I want to get my this person, this person leadership using command at market center edition. Where do I go? I go answers.kw.com and the command market center edition right there. He's like, oh, okay. Like there, there it is. So guys, thank you for being here. I appreciate your time. Thank you. you. Were awesome. Yeah, you got it. Awesome. Really awesome. And, you know, I Thank admire you. you sharing what you shared too. And God bless you. No problem. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Thank you guys all so, so much. Um, I hope you all have a great rest of the day and a great week ahead. We're going to be uploading this on YouTube. And if you need anything, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. You got it. See you guys later. Great day. Thank you. Thank you.